Um, yeah. Hello, my name is Florian Weber. I work for Überbit, and this session is about configuration management ecosystem. So, in a broad sense, it's about various contract modules and like the new core system we have in Drupal 8 and how you can manage your site with it. And I will um, talk about the um, deployment workflows, how you can interact with configuration management and like build your project on it. So my name is Florian Weber. I work as a team leader uh, Drupal for Drupal in at Überbit. Um, we have offices in in Mannheim, um, in uh, Berlin, and in in Stralsund. This is our office in in Mannheim. It's pretty nice. <laughs> so we are looking for Drupal developers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Currently there are fifty. Uh, 55 persons at Uberbit. We do also Typo3, uh, Magento, and other um, PHP systems, and also uh, .NET. But I focus on Drupal, and we have a strong Drupal team. So you're really, if you want to do work in Drupal, you can work fast. <laughs> so that was the advertisement. Uh, now back to the really important topic. It's the configuration management ecosystem. So configuration management in a nutshell. Um, configuration management was brought to us by the Configuration Management Initiative. It was one of the first initiatives that was ever announced. It was announced in 2011. And the main goal was that we structure our site we have in config, or that we create a new system, the configuration system, which goal it was to store data in it. And this data needs to be synchronized to other environments. Instead of depending on variables and we store it somewhere in our database and it's hard to move it to the other, another environment. The goal was to make it simple and optimize it for synchronization between different environments. That was the goal. That's why in Drupal 8 we have two big chunks or two big systems in Drupal 8. One of them is the content system based on content entities. For example, you know, the user taxonomy terms, files, um, shortcut sets or shortcut links, menu links, stuff like this. I did some uh, research, so I installed Drupal 8.4 in standard profile and currently have 11 content entity types. So it's really hard even for me to actually know all of them. I uh, assume there are maybe five or six, no, but it's actually 11, so a lot of stuff. And we have even more config entity types, so 29. And a config entity is everything in Drupal 8 what's not a content entity. So config entities are fields, <coughs> content types, node types, so to speak, um, form modes, view modes, views, image styles, um, formatted configuration, um, and of course a lot of uh, many um, Contrib modules also provide their own config entities. And um, yeah, so the holy grail of, um, um, oh, so I skip the slide. This is the actual picture I want to show. Um, so the holy grail uh, which we follow is that we have in a project, which is not, so you don't change stuff on production. So a good project in my, in my opinion, it's multiple environments. You at least have a development environment where you can try stuff out. And then if you like the thing you build, you actually export the configuration and move it to production. That's the whole goal of the configuration management to make this process easy. So um, in this project, for example, we have three stages. On the left is the dev stage, a dev environment, and in the middle, like stage, maybe the client does QA on it and or other review instance on, on the right side there is a production environment and the idea is that content moves from right to right to left so you actually don't need content in your a lot of content in your um, development environment because yeah most of the time you only need a few content entity types to develop your site and so the configuration moves from right to left that uh, from left to right, so from development to stage, you review it there, and then you move it to production. So that's 
the process and how does it work. So you use, for example, a trash command line tool um, to export your configuration on, on the left side with trash CX config export. Then it dumps it all to a YAML file, so you can commit it to your repository and ship it to production. And on production, the workflow is you first run Drush updb to actually update the code base um, and the database structure, and afterwards you can import the configuration. So currently, this process, this step is not enforced, but it will be at some point that you actually can't import configuration on a, on a database or a Drupal site that's not in a valid state. If you do it in a different way, or even clear Drush all caches with Drush CR at the first command, that's wrong, it will break your site, because Drush CR or cache rebuild expects that your Drupal site is in a, in, in a valid state. But if you just change the code base, and maybe there's a plugin missing, or you move modules around, the Drupal site or your database isn't in a valid state. So you actually have to first run AppDB and then configuration import, uh, configuration import and then maybe trash um, CR or other stuff at the end. Anything else is just wrong and you shouldn't do it because from time to time it could break your site. So, um, speaking about um, use cases um, where we have not a clear distinction what is config and what's content because if you don't have a really clean break what stuff is owned by the developer and what's, what stuff of your, on your site is owned by the editor, you will always have problems during deployment because there's changed configuration on production and configuration management works like this. If you import a site, it will override the existing configuration because the configuration that's not already exported, it's gone. It's very different in comparison to features in Drupal 6 or Drupal 7. Because in features, you could decide, I want to have this piece of content or this piece of configuration actually is managed by features. And the whole other side or other variables would be um, like unmanaged configuration. It's not part of your deployment process. The editor could, editor could change it all the time. It's not exported in features, so you wouldn't revert it. So it's unmanaged configuration. But this concept of unmanaged configuration doesn't exist in Drupal 8 because a site owns the whole configuration and trash import, uh, config import, config export, deals always about the whole stuff of your site and not certain aspects. So, for example, if you have um, blocks, that's an easy example, um, blocks have two components. One of them is the block content, so it's actually a content entity, but to decide where is the block on your page, it's a config entity. So actually, if you have this clear distinction and remove or purge the configuration on deployment, it means that the actually editor can't use blocks as a management, or it's not an, anymore an editor feature on your site, because if you, you have to deal with it in your deployment process, and if you don't deal with it, then it would mean you override the change that the editor made on your site. That's bad. But also, if you want to be, uh, treat it as content, so would mean before deployment you actually have to incorporate the changes that you made on production in your um, configuration before you deploy it. And that's also really a burden to the developer to actually merge in the configuration from lifecycle back to production and then deploy. Especially if you are in an environment where you actually don't have directly access to the production server, for example it's behind a VPN or you just give someone a package and this person deploys it to the production server, so the process of this um, so that's really hard. And sometimes um, we want to have, for example, a taxonomy, so taxonomy terms. So you, you have a vocabulary with some taxonomy terms, and the taxonomy terms are really important for your structure of your site because you have other rules implemented against it, maybe access control or theming or, or um, exposed filters in a view or, I don't know, other stuff. So it's also not configuration, so you have the same problem in the other direction. You actually want to treat it as configuration and deploy it to your site. That would be the ideal workflow, but you can't. So for this use case, for example, you can actually look at the default content module or, the, or migrate default content. There's a session uh, about it tomorrow. Um, other stuff where configuration 
management currently breaks is um, default images and image fields. Um, so you have a default uh, image field and with a default image. The default image on the image field is referenced by UUID in the configuration. But if you deploy this configuration to your, uh, to your production site, actually because it's just a UUID and the default image is not part of your configuration, then it breaks. You actually have invalid configuration on your production site. Drupal hands, hands, uh, um, deals with it gracefully, so it doesn't fail or so, but you actually don't have a um, default image anymore. That's also very bad. Um, another example, uh, or really um, where we see that the architecture of a module is really important if it, in terms of ease of deployment. So is, is it config or con uh, content is web form? In Drupal 7, as we know, web forms were nodes. So by default, there were content entities. But in Drupal 8, the web form module, previously called YAML form, is now a config entity. So the whole purpose or the whole architecture <coughs> of, this, of this module changed. And now it's not easy anymore to give it to an editor um, as an a, a editorial feature, because you always have these issues during deployment. So, um, and for example, there are also uh, other stuff like use or always or always was um, configuration, and there are also, um, for example, in panels by default it's configuration, but there are other concepts, for example, with panelizer that you actually attach a panelizer field to a node, and then the panel configuration for this particular content entity is stored inside the field. So actually, you don't use configuration or CMI to actually store the panel configuration. You store it instead in, in the node. So these <coughs> stuff, if you think about the architecture of your site, could really like um, influence the ease of your deployment, make it easy to deploy often, because otherwise you can't really develop fast and always have issues um, with this stuff, and you only couldn't be like, um, have no really um, benefit of the whole new features because you can't really use it because it's always um, like a really hard process for you to roll out new units. So these use cases here are not um, taken care of by Drupal Core. The only use case that Drupal, care, uh, Drupal Core takes care of is the deployment like the thing where it goes from left to right. <clears throat> so two advanced um, workflows I want to talk about. The first one is installing a site from existing configuration. That's really useful if you want to bootstrap a new environment, a new development environment, or want to set up a new um, staging environment, or if you want to use it in, um, for example, in EHAT tests, where you need to actually clean the environment with all the configuration of your site and you don't want to deal with database dumps, shuffling around. Um, and the other use case I want to talk about is environment-specific overrides. For example, some people want to have dev modules, like config dev develop, uh, enabled on your uh, development site, or stage file proxy, and some stuff you only need on production. But also core, core extension is like the core thing of configuration management. It's not you can only have one of this file in your project. So it's actually, in core by itself, not possible to change or have different enabled modules on different environments. <coughs> well, other use case for environment-specific override is like caching settings or API credentials. So maybe you don't want to put them in your repository uh, because you don't want to expose it um, to developers or other contractors you're working with. So it actually has to stay on the production environment or you want to swap out like an API endpoint that you can test your site with a different API setting on a different environment. <coughs> so bootstrapping aside uh, works with like ex uh, installing from existing configuration. You have multiple options there. Yeah. The first one is the config installer module. Uh, we have it. It's uh, developed by AlexPod. Um, it's an install profile where you can select an other install profile, and then for it uses the config swing folder and then installs it in your site. 
but actually has a few problems because actually we have to write the uh, install profile name to uh, settings.php and it also doesn't really uh, work well with multilingual sites because there is a problem in uh, installing multiple languages. <coughs> um, there's an other project like an install profile generator. So you actually can create, so if you start with standard profile and then you can export it in your own profile and then you can in the installer just select this new profile which contains all the configurations. And there is currently a core pest required. I uh, said, yeah, I forgot the, um, the issue number, but I will show later to you. And that's, then there's a third option which I currently use because it doesn't require a core patch and I actually don't care that you can install a new site through the UI, I just use Drush. Um, it's Drush and then you can set it up with a custom profile. Um, configuration overrides. In Drupal Core, um, in Drupal Core without any config modules, um, works like this. This, you have the global config variable. You can put it in settings local PHP, and then you just use the name of the config entity, or even you actually don't have to provide the whole co config entity. You can also override just the single setting in uh, config entity. For example, the first line sets the log level to the both, so it's actually a good setting to have in your settings.local PHP file and your development environment that you actually can call or call um, our Or if you want to change the second example, the site administrator email address, then you just change it. So these all rights have a few flaws. Um, the first one is it's only possible for a simple configuration like these two settings because they doesn't um, they are not related to state in the database. So actually, if you want to have like enable or disable modules, it's really like a very low setting in Drupal because it influences the state of your database of your site. Or you can't add new fields or new view modes via configuration because if we add a new field in Drupal, it actually changes the state of the database. It creates the storage structure for this field. Or if we remove a field or change the field type, these are not like stateless operations that we can add, uh, edit. We always have to process a process to <coughs> bring our database from invalid in a valid state. And that's why you can't override. The second limitation is um, the overrides are not visible in the UI. The UI always shows you the, um, the default values that you actually in the configuration. That's because um, <laughs> that's how the system works. Um, because the over overrides at like are very late in the process, and like the um, the config edit forms, and so uh, they are all displayed the default values. So it actually can lead to confusion. I had it with a colleague, so. I had some production settings that they were really important, like cache settings and um, if page cache is enabled or automatic drawn or other stuff uh, in, a, in a settings file on production. And there was some performance issue. And actually, my colleague like looked in the wrong direction because the whole day before, a few hours, because he went to, went to the performance uh, screen and looked, oh, cache is disabled. Yeah, that's why it's slow. But actually, it wasn't was enabled. The root cause was. Uh, and in the other uh, part of the system, but actually it's very confusing. Same if you want to override like Solar, uh, search API solo URLs, uh, then some stuff in the backend UI doesn't work anymore. You can't actually re index stuff through the UI because the, the re index button um, is an admin, URL, URL, uh, admin route, and admin routes we have no overrides, so actually you can't connect to the solar server anymore. So it's really yeah, it's an issue that makes it harder to develop and use a site because you actually have to deal with, you always have to know, you know yes, I've overwritten this configuration and that's why it is different from actually what I see in the backend. <clears throat> and the other module I want to talk about is um, config split. Why? Um, config split is um, a module which um, divides your configuration in multiple folders and then you can, on config import, you actually can compose or read from multiple sources um, and import in your site. So actually what config split does, 
it uh, converts the runtime overriding from from settings local PHP. So settings local PHP is a runtime override, but config split is actually override on config import. So you import or change the configuration during the import and then it's persistent in your site. So it means you only have to know have one state of your configuration and this is also reflected in DBI. It makes it really easy to deal with these changes. And it also has some benefits because they actually can disable modules, um, exclude configuration. Um, for example, uh, I have one example with a web form that I actually like configure config split to treat web form as content and then I'm back on a T7 like architecture. Um, you have questions so far? No? Okay, then let's um, so a bit more time. So, um, this is my my triple six set. As I change, just change the resolution. <clears throat> okay, so is it readable in the back? Yes. Okay. No. You're not in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I, I do on this side uh, is I, I drop my existing database. Okay, and then I will change the... Um, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Actually, lost the wrong file. So because I want to start with uh, some profiles, I uh, actually have to change the profile name here. Standard. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and my config sync directory is overwritten, so I actually stored outside of the document group. That's different. Um, so this is my directory structure. Currently, so the web folder contains my, my Drupal site, and then I have a config sync folder on the root of my project where the, all the configuration will be exported, and then I have uh, config local, which I use later for config split, and then I can put in settings that I don't want to move from one environment to the other in there. So, so we just start with uh, some profile. Um, but this we don't need to be URL. Standard profile for me is still. You have to use PHP 7. I think I use PHP 7.1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Ah, maybe that's a good, good idea. Yeah. Let's just say it. Restart. Would you jeopardy is the good using right? Yes. Okay, I spell it. Jeopardy. Yes. Now it's done. This debug was an awesome idea. Okay, so that's my, my Drupal uh, site and standard profile. Um, I will export the configuration once to refresh uh, CX. So I had some configuration in config suit before, that's why it's the config div here is really big. Now I exported my configuration, um, then it's in config suit. I actually can review the whole configuration and uh, put it into Git. 
Um, there's the, for example, the system.site. Currently it's called a site inst install. I will change it to the UI to um, So I export it again, and then it's headed world in my file, and I can change it to headed world 2, and then import my site again. So that's pretty straightforward. It's imported, I reload my site, so it works. So that's configuration management. You export stuff, you import stuff, it works. Um, <laughs> Now I uh, show you the override, the local override, so I do config system.site and then I call the name and then it's hello world 3, world 3. Okay, now if I reload my site, it's actually not on my site because it's render caching. So if I clear the cache, then System dot site name site name. String package missing. Ah. Maybe my. Maybe it's not render cache. <coughs> Maybe it's not render cache. <coughs> hmm. Demos are awesome. Actually, I think my settings. PHP doesn't include the settings local on them. That's that's why. That's why it works. Now I reload my site. It doesn't reflect it, so I clear the render cache. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you override it. So, so that's the, the override uh, thing. Um, also with proposal lighting. So now I'll go to the uh, configuration thing. Look at basic site settings, yeah, it's still Hello World 2. So that's the thing that's very confusing if you don't know what's, where's the overlay coming from. Um, now I will show you the um, config uh, install generator. It works like, it's also a brush command. So the idea is that your site has a, its own installation profile if you don't use an existing um, distribution because we don't support inheritance of install profiles currently, so you can't use this approach. But actually, with Rush, you can import all the um, install all the configuration profile, uh, config install profiles. So, um, Rush, I think it's called Rush install generate profile. Mm -hmm. I think you have to make it up. Install profile change. General data. Now it's EPG. Install profile general. Okay, and then <coughs> I can generate my own profile from the site. So the use case there is you start a standard profile and then you want to convert standard profile to another profile to your own profile because or um, because you want to do more advanced stuff with it, or you want to use it on multiple sites, or with your own distribution uh, with it, MIDI distribution, it doesn't always have to be a big black from it. Machine name, so one machine name in those examples, example two, because I already prepared another installation profile I want to use later. It's a little bit smaller than the standard profile, so you don't have to wait long. Um, so that's my standard profile. Okay, and the um, it's a profile generator. What it does is it exports your active configuration of your site in the profiles folder, creates a new profile, example two, and there is now your configuration. So it looks like <coughs> looks like this in profiles. We have exa uh, example two, and the interesting part here is um, our profile has no dependencies at all. That's because um, our profile contains a, a whole site. It's very different from standard profile. Actually, standard profile has a few dependencies and ships um, configuration config slash install. 
But this insert profile is different because it has a complete thank you, has a complete site uh, in it, which is stored in config suite, and therefore we have um, a core extension YAML where we have our dependencies. So because Drupal core currently can't install a site from existing configuration, the idea is that you have uh, install profile, which is very small, has no dependencies. So Drupal installs it with only system module en enabled, and then directly afterwards you import the con um, existing configuration. If you deal with <coughs> standard profile, then it becomes really slow because standard profile has a lot of dependencies. It ships default configuration, and then you you import set up your whole site only to import your own configuration afterwards. That means that you actually install the site two times, just the default configuration, and then directly override. And that's a waste of time, especially in test environments. And that's why that's the, the new approach that your uh, install profile ships the whole configuration. Um, and then you can actually use Drush to reinstall this thing with Drush SE example, example two, and then I can pass in a config gear, and the config gear is profiles. So the thing I actually export it. And then it, this, oh, this name is example two. Do -do -do. Oh yeah, it's a profile. Yeah, in settings low, in settings PHP, we write this, uh, there's a hard-coded name of the uh, install profile. And I actually currently change it from, so my old install profile was standard, and now the new one is uh, example two, and that's why I have to change it, otherwise I can't install it. Install my site. Um, Yeah, now the install, profile, uh, install process looks a little bit different. So it aut Drush automatically imports the uh, configuration of my of my side of the Done. So this is my new side. I can log in. <coughs> Now, more advanced stuff with config, uh, config split. We'll then know those modules and show you how you can um, exclude configuration from exporting and use, have local configuration. The one example I currently use on my sites is the Webform module. I will start with this one. So, I enable config split. <coughs> it shows up on Config split settings, and you can have multiple splits. So I currently use a call local split, and then I define a folder where I actually export it, and then you can exclude whole modules like automatic prompt if you don't want to enable it, or um, better example maybe is a DB log if you only want to have it um, installed on your development environment but not on production. You can actually toggle modules with this module. And uh, one example is the blacklist uh, stuff. So web form by default has all a single form is a config entity and the name says web form, web form dot, and then my name on the web form, like content or um, poll or I don't know, newsletter registration, stuff like that. So I want to exclude it and then I just use it like this. Click save. Uh, I have to clear the cache once, otherwise the configuration won't apply. And now I run trash config export. And now So now the whole configuration was exported to my installed profile and on config local because I use dot dot config local as a path. It's actually above the document view, there is no web form configuration. So I actually can change this on my site uh, to something else, or I can create a new um, 
you move forward in the second one. Two. Three. Four. <clears throat> so I have another form, I do trust config export again and now I have two uh, forms on this side. So if I want to, so the deployment process looks like this, that you call drush config split export on production. This will, if I create a, a new, another form or just change this one from the title from this form from foo to bar, it will and call crush split export again. It will only um, export the splits, only the configuration I added to the, the blacklist. Now it looks like this config foo has the, I have to actually pass in, uh, where is the title on this form? Interesting. Hmm. Bad example. Yeah, I'm actually not sure why it doesn't work. Maybe I just delete the whole whole folder again, or the whole content, and try to enforce. Now it's gone, so it works. I don't know why it didn't work in the beginning. So that's the, the idea on production. You export the configuration in the folder, and then you run trash config import, and it won't override your configuration. So if I change my site name um, to what is my site name there? To uh, site install, and I remove the override from settings. Yes. <coughs> import my site again. Oh, it's not changing. Site name. Actually, that's true. Why would I do it after me? So the export file is config sample, sample to and then I have the side, this two side, set it work to, now I change it to a three, import my side. <coughs> okay, so was already in a three, four, import my side again, and it works. So actually I can move with this module or this setup, I can move platform module from config to configuration and it will be will make um, deployments much easier. You can similar thing do similar things with um, block module for example. If you want to treat your block configuration as content, you just add it to the export and it will work. Um, you can have multiple enabled splits. And you can use the um, so multiple enabled splits, and actually on the yeah overrides you could uh, enable which splits are active on your site because the config import process will uh, use the enabled splits by default. So you actually compose all your all. Before, if you just use core, core uses a single source to import the configuration of your site. With config split, you have config sync plus the split and another split. So you actually can have three sources where you combine the configuration and import it in your site. That's the way I do it. So that's basically it. Now we have uh, four minutes for questions. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, about 
the installation. Yeah. Um, you did it with uh, install profile, but isn't it possible to just uh, do site install with minimal and then uh, specify the config here? Yeah, that's also possible if you, but then you uh, have to use minimal as a profile. Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually your, your site in config um, core extensions, yeah, yeah. There, there is the, the profile referenced um, somewhere, core extension. Um, on the last line, there's a profile. Hey, actually, there and there. You actually have to use minimal there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's possible. But I actually like my own install profile mm -hmm. because I write update hooks and other or post input post import commands in the install profile. Because from time to time, my update hooks apply the update hook applies only to a certain module. I actually put it into the module because it belongs there, but this is the update hook specific to my site and has like to do it, to deal with multiple updates, like migrating one module or one stuff from one module to the other. Then I think it's a higher task in a hierarchy and I put it in the install. Okay. It's just for some clean architecture, but yeah, the info profile in uh, install profiles in Drupal are just like normal modules. They have a higher priority. By default, it's only a thousand, so you actually can do stuff there or override uh, services from other modules. So if you have a, a config module, uh, config module which overrides the service, but you want to write override it again, you can actually do it in your install profile because it has a high priority, one thousand anyway, and then you can use. It. If you have, use minimal as an install profile, you can't actually change it. Mm -hmm. So it's your level to own your whole site. Yeah, and the uh, like install profile generator is just a, a small rush command to convert your minimal installation of standard profile to your own thing and then you start with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. No other questions? Uh, would I put my own cu custom modules or the contract modules I use into this pro profile, custom profile, or would I have it normally? I, I put it in, in the normal module, module scope, not inside the profile, but actually, yeah, I could move my, my own modules to, to the profile for you. Makes sense, but I thought about it. Yeah, quite well. Mm -hmm. But it, it won't like affect the, the order of your modules, so profile own modules uh, don't have a higher priority also by default. It's just code organization. Makes sense. Yeah. Why are the Drupal core profiles not organized like this that the profiles don't have dependencies but only configuration so that the continuous integration for example in Drupal uh, runs faster? Yeah. So it actually the test profile or we could have a test profile which works like this, but for a standard profile is that standard profile is composed to multiple modules and doesn't ship like the some default default views. So I don't know. I mean this is a lot more of config configuration files in my exported configuration in comparison to standard profile. Because standard profile um, doesn't Start a profile that did, and then you can do kind of it. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of them. So actually, because yeah, my profile now can also contains the, the config uh, installed from all of the other modules. So standard profile doesn't have. It's some, sometimes it, it provides custom configuration like custom blocks for body and seven and um, and fields. But sometimes it just uses the existing default configuration from the module, from the dependencies. Like, standard profile doesn't have date formats, for example. But if you do it like this, then you but contain the default configuration from each module. Yeah, from each module, and then it's and it's a message to update because then the actual. So it means each time we have a new configuration in a module, we have to yeah, export the default, pro, the standard profile. Yeah. Yeah, for testing purpose, yeah, okay. that makes sense. Um, also, I think um, you don't do it because if you install, so my site 
currently with my profile, it also contains languages. So in the install, I don't have an option to choose the languages anymore because they are defined in my install profile. My sites consist of German and English. But in standard profile, you can actually choose the language you want to install. And then it fetches the language-dependent configuration. And that's why it's also faster on my side because in this other use case, for my side, because I already did some decisions that I want to have English in here. But for core, standard profile, we actually couldn't do it because you create your site through the installer and in the installer you have some options. What do you want to do? Like German, French, Italian, multiple languages. Yeah. And then date formats and the other stuff are configured dependently on this stuff. Because if you have a config translation enabled and multiple languages, we have different date formats for you. Then it's already localized and other stuff. So standard profile has more matching in installers. And uh, install profile with the complete exported site configuration is a fixed thing. You can't change it during installation. Anymore. So this makes sense only for testing profiles or not for regular yeah, use? It would make sense for testing profile, which act as a fixed job for the test. Okay. Okay. Time's up.